Welcome to Investors Insights, episode number 162. We'd like to start off today by letting you know how thrilled we are that you're watching our vlog, uh, our video. And at the same time, if you don't have time to watch the uh, vlog, uh, just know that there is a link that can be found to the right of this video that would allow you to listen to us on our podcast uh, while you're at the gym, while you're walking, uh, taking a break uh, in your car. Uh, we're excited about that and hope you take advantage of it. So on that note, let's get started. You're listening to Investors Insights with Greg Powell and the Portfolio Strategy Team from Vibeland Partners. Guys, good morning. Good morning. morning. Uh, great meeting this morning mm-hmm. uh, in terms of uh, the details mm-hmm. uh, in on the economy, uh, what we're seeing in portfolios. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's let's start off, um, Bobby, with uh, the holiday coming up here. We got Memorial Day weekend mm-hmm. coming up. The the, the sales promotions will start coming out. Yep. Uh, we already started getting some consumer news, didn't we? We did. It's good news. So last week we reported some bad news, lower GDP, lower business confidence. Well, this week's a new week, and it's a good week in that we can report some good news on the consumer. So for the first time in a year, consumer spending picked up in April, so that's positive. Right. And that's important because our economy is 70% the consumer. Mm-hmm. So consumer mm-hmm. spending is very important, and so hopefully that will help GDP with the next quarter and the current mm-hmm. quarter. Uh, and also two uh, points on uh, consumer spending. The consumers are choosing experiences over goods. So they're choosing going out to eat with your friends, going on cruises, mm-hmm. right. that kind of thing. Sure. And, and then also they're buying goods online more than they are in the stores. And so that's two trends, mm-hmm. uh, new, yeah. two new trends, really. So yeah. that's good news. Yeah. Yeah. Online sales uh, are starting to really be tracked yeah. mm-hmm. uh, more and more. Mm-hmm. So, uh, in fact, I uh, saw where... Uh, uh, more and more people are even buying groceries uh, online, you know, oh, yeah. not the perishable items, but just a- and having them shipped to their house. So a uh, new trend in the way in which we live and the way we spend our money. Mm-hmm. Ashley, you had positive news as well. Yes. Let's talk about this in terms of housing. Drill down on that just a minute, because housing is very important to our economy. It is. Happy to. We've got uh, two days we'll be watching this week. Tuesday is the data that comes out from the U.S. Census about new home construction. That should be up about 9.2%. As we told you earlier in the year, that was a vlog, but we really wanted to watch. And that's uh, becoming self-fulfilling. 9.2% increase, even if you smooth out the weather date. It makes sense. Around Mm -hmm. the country, you would build more in April than Mm -hmm. you would in March. Right. But even if you smooth the weather out out there. And the buyers are out there. So even if you smooth all that data out, it's really good. And then Friday, we'll get the data from the National Association of Realtors. They're the main tracker of existing home sales. Mm -hmm. But what we like about it is, is the new home construction is, it's a good multiplier for the economy. Yeah, talk about that. Yeah, if you're you're building a house, in essence, that creates three jobs in the account and the economy for nearly a year. And those are the people who so are three, working three on So three new jobs per house being constructed. Absolutely. Those are the people working on there. It's the suppliers on mm-hmm. there. You know, that's about three jobs. Where in the existing home sales, you don't get that multiplier. So we're excited to see that. Mm-hmm. And to Bobby's point on consumer confidence, it really helps when housing is good mm-hmm. because that's a key point of consumer mm-hmm. confidence that Bobby mentioned. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so we've got positive news both sides of consumer is spending, but also from the standpoint, new jobs being created. That person with the new job goes... Yes. I can spend, I can spend some money. money too. Right? Yeah. yeah, so you, you add that. Now, yeah, on that note, because like, I would say these two parts of the economy are really what's been holding us up this whole time. The okay. U.S. consumer mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. housing has been really the only bright spots for the last few years. So these two, what they're pointing out holding up is very important going forward it, mm-hmm. to, to continue to sustain. Well, and also also that, that impacts portfolios. When you have that kind of news, people go, the economy is yeah, growing, therefore companies should make money. Now, on the other side, the, these two topics are holding up the economy. From your standpoint, you brought up, but wait, guys, let's let's look at some negative here in terms of energy prices. Right. So uh, over the weekend or this morning, big news, Goldman Sachs came out it's, uh, expecting oil prices to go higher. That's huge because they've been a big bear on oil prices. Now they, they're only expecting $50 oil, oil straight on 47. So not a huge expansion, but the reasoning is important. The reasoning is because of supply shocks. Nigerian oil is at 20-year lows in terms of production because militants have taking their production offline. You have right. oil sand fire taking we, we production offline. We talked about offline. that in the last week's we talked about last week. Now, how does this impact individuals? At least short-term production snafus push prices up but over short-term periods. But even if they go back down long-term, it may hurt the U.S. consumer as you're going to see gas prices go up because so, that's a, those things quickly quickly react. So the conversation I'm having with clients who are calling in saying, Greg, why are prices going up at the gas pump here and how can that mm-hmm. impact my portfolio? 
th this has mm -hmm. a, a lot to do with it uh, from a sure. standpoint. But, but that consumer all of a sudden says, whoa, I'm having to pay more at the gas pump. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe less inclined to pay for that experience. Right. Right. So right. you yeah. could see it start to taper off. And we, and we really haven't seen a multiplier. Consumers a lot of times have been savings of late, and that's because the, the thought was that they didn't believe oil prices would stay down. Well, now they're being proven right, which, yeah. which, may, which may cause them to decrease spending. And add to that uh, the fact that over the last three weeks, we've had the stock market go down for the last three straight weeks while oil was rising. So the market is decoupling from oil, but in the wrong way. We were hoping it would decouple and then oil would be down, the market go up. Mm -hmm. it, it's doing the opposite of that, which is concerning. Right, which is the reason we've stayed, uh, at this point, very conservative in our yes. positions, mm -hmm. uh, still watching it very closely, uh, watching a lot of economic data. We're hearing a lot of companies pushing out their spending mm -hmm. till after the presidential yep. election. A lot of things going on, and we're going to keep you posted on it. We appreciate you taking time, and hopefully you've gotten information to understand why we make the moves we do so that we don't have your portfolio impacted uh, in the volatility. So thanks for uh, watching, and uh, we'll be in touch.